from Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering ZertoCon 2018. Brought to you by Zerto. This is the Cube. We're at ZertoCon 2018, Heinz Convention Center in Boston. My name is Paul Gillen. My guest is John White, the VP of Product Strategy at Expedient. And uh, why don't you start uh, start by giving us just the elevator pitch on what Expedient is all about? Sure. Expedient is a cloud service provider. Um, as well as managed service provider, and we also have data centers that we operate uh, here mainly on the East Coast. We have uh, seven cities and 11 data centers. Um, those are in Boston here locally, um, as well as Baltimore, Maryland, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, uh, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Memphis, Tennessee. And then we actually uh, will put our private cloud services really anywhere. So we actually will put them on the customer's premises to uh, meet that need, as well as then in partner data centers anywhere over the world, if they have to deal with compliance, security, um, whatever it might be, we'll, we'll go and tackle those problems for them. So our goal is to be an infrastructure as a service uh, provider for you know really all the enterprise. So when would a company do business with you versus uh, a Microsoft or, or an Amazon? Yeah, so you know if you kind of look at really three ways to kind of go cloud, right, you can still do it, do it yourself. Uh, you can build some cloud-based services. Um, and that's, again, you're in it on your own. Um, you can go all the way to the extreme, which is the AWS or the Azures, and that's more, again, you're kind of in a do-it-yourself type of mentality, and uh, your support structure there is a little bit different. It's maybe a little bit more mechanical, a little bit more robotical. Um, if you need help in transitioning and figuring out where your workload should sit, and um, maybe creating more of a hybrid cloud, so it's maybe on your premises, it's inside of one of our data centers, and then maybe it's even in one of those AWS or Azures. You're going to work with a company like Expedient um, to go and help you figure out where you should put your workloads first off, and then how to create that long-term strategy so you get the best of all worlds that are out there, not just one prescriptive cloud. So you're kind of the high-touch cloud provider. Then. Very, very high-touch, yeah. Our whole uh, product service is actually all a la carte menus, so you pick and choose what you want. We can manage servers, we can provide virtual infrastructure, we can do things like DR as a service, backups as a service, all those pieces. So you build you basically your perfect IT strategy with us, and then direct connects into AWS and Azure and some you know, other cool products coming soon to kind of make your life a little bit easier, consuming and running your workloads in public clouds. We hear a lot these days about multi-cloud, about customers wanting to shift their workloads seamlessly around between multiple back-end cloud providers. Certainly vendors talk about that a lot. Do you hear customers talking about it? Yeah, we have some customers starting to talk about it. And uh, you know, in the beginning, they just wanted to see, okay, I'm running workloads in AWS, I'm running workloads in Expedient, I'm multi-cloud. And then they, they start to understand, well, our management's really hard and the network's really hard, and the security's really hard, and we're doing you know, backups another way than we've done it traditionally, and we're helping customers bridge that gap and saying, we can take some of the security policies that we've been running internally in our data center, and maybe you've been doing inside of your data center, and take those out into the public cloud. Simplifying things with uh, networking. We're a pretty big VMware NSX shop, so doing something where you can create tagging and policies local inside of the Expedient data center, and then being able to translate those up into AWS and Azure to make it you basically one seamless network is really, really big and key for our customers. It's something that I think is still new. Um, we have a handful of customers that we're working on a, cool, a lot of cool research products on, projects on, uh, but I think it's going to be something that's going to be the dominant force here in the next few years. You mentioned disaster recovery as a service. Now, is, is that where Zert, Zert, uh, Zerto fits into your, uh, your plan? Correct, yeah, we've been working with Zerto uh, for quite some time now, really since they were in, you know, just coming to Boston. Um, and we worked and spent a ton of time with them, getting them to understand the needs of service providers as they were traditionally enterprise focused. And that, uh, that, you know, that partnership that we've built over the years has you know, done tremendous you know, value for not only our customers, but our businesses. And uh, we've actually had two year-over-year -year growth for the last three years with them. And actually, we just won the, uh, the Service Provider Growth Partner of the Year Award with them. So we're creating some pretty cool solutions around DR as a service and taking some of our network background and actually simplifying DR for our customers that way. So we use Zerto as well as VMware and uh, some of our own private connectivity, NSX, to actually simplify the package of DR to get the recovery time objective down into 10, 15 minutes instead of four hours or eight hours or multiple days that really most people are experiencing right now. So when you look at the landscape, there are a lot of disaster recovery uh, solution providers you could have worked with. What does Zerto do that's really different? The part, well, you know, on a technology-wise, I mean, watching them, you know, take a look at the change block that's occurring inside of the VMware environment, making it agnostic from a storage uh, layer, that was really big for us in the beginning on the technical tip-in, 
And then the partnership as of late, um, or early since the beginning, was the big value differentiator that we just couldn't find in other uh, companies that were out there. We locked uh, you know, arms with their product management team and their product strategy team right away. We gave them literally two sheets of paper and said, these are the things we need to be successful as a service provider using your software. They went down, checked them all off. We started going at it, and we started then growing that year over year for the last three years. So. It's been, uh, it's been an amazing partnership. They have a strategic team that understands where the market and industry is going, um, and we're going to you know, use them and, and leverage them as much as we possibly can to help out our customers and give them the best outcomes they can, they can possibly get. When your customers talk to you about backup, where do you see them going? Where is that, where is that market headed? So backup, you know, traditional backup is something we've been doing for quite some time. I mean, we do petabytes of backups every year for customers. Still using tape, believe it or not, as well. We have a lot of discs, tape but will never die. tape is still out there. <laughs> I, I actually have a uh, bumper sticker that I think EMC made when they, when they bought Avamar saying tape is dead. And, I don't think it's right. going to die anytime soon. We're mainframe still, was dead, we're, too. Yeah, right. Mainframe <laughs> has been dead, and we still roll new ones into our data centers on a regular basis and then put cloud beside it. But um, on the, you know, the backup side of it, you know, if you look at some of you know, the new disasters, right? Look at Atlanta. Um, their disaster was different. It wasn't a natural disaster. It was a ransomware attack, ransomware attack right? That's a new disaster. We're going to find new disasters, and you can't go and restore back from 24 hours ago and think that that's good. We, we, we don't live in that world anymore. It needs to be from five minutes, seven minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it might be. So we use their, their journaling today to actually get those quick recoveries. And if they can extend that out, I think it's going to be uh, pretty powerful for customers to say, okay, I want to go back to two years, three days, and six hours from now and say, give me that point in time snap. That's the way I want to actually restore that data. Um, you know, succeeding in that vision, I think, will definitely change the game for how we actually look at doing, you know, backup and restores in the future. Uh, the a lot of talk at this conference about resilience mm -hmm. is that a concept that you think customers, your customers, have really internalized? They understand what that means. They're getting it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, DR even was something that we had to kind of walk them into, but now, if they have an outage, it's not just money that they're, they're losing, it's the reputation. And as we all know now, reputation is key. And you look at uh, Twitter, when somebody has, a, has an outage um, or has a problem, I mean, the, their users essentially just blow them up. And there's memes and all kinds of other stuff. There's a lot of funny ones for the airlines, I mean, the, from Delta and Southwest having those challenges. And so our customers today are realizing that, yeah, we can't go, you know, a day or two without having service to our customers. We can maybe go a minute or two, but that's about it. We need to make sure we're being resilient with our data. We need to make sure we're protecting it. We'll be able to create ways to quickly roll it back to make sure our customers are up online because they just can't go down anymore. How important is security as a driver of, of resilience and, and spending on disaster recovery now? Yeah, I, I mean, security is definitely, um, you know, with, with being able to quickly restore from like a ransomware, I mean, it's starting to bring that infrastructure that has been, you know, security has been a little bit different there, and where network security has been a little bit different, kind of bringing them together to create, say, we need to have a full package. We need not need not only need to figure out how we're blocking it at the edge and blocking it internally east-west, but we need to figure out if we're going to get breached, because we're going to get breached, how can we quickly restore from that? How can we make sure not we're not being held ransom for, you know, Bitcoin or whatever the next currency is going to be that they're going to be held ransom for that they just can't pay because uh, it maybe will knock them out of business. So, uh, John, it be Expedient, you know, being a, a, a small, specialized cloud service provider, you're kind of dancing with elephants when you're out there with Amazon and, and Microsoft. What's the secret? What, what keeps you guys successful, and uh, uh, how, how do you keep, keep viable? There's, there's a lot of different things. I think the way we focus on technologies is a little bit unique. I mean, we're there to design the best technical solution for that customer and not maybe fit them into a one-size-fits-all you know, outfit. Um, the other side of it is a lot of our customers like the local touch and feel. Um, majority of our customers are at and around our data centers. Um, that way they can get to learn the facility. They can, even if they're running cloud services with us, they know where it lives. Um, that maybe eases their minds from a compliance standpoint, security standpoint, or just in a trust saying, I'm going to take my data that's been living inside of my data center that's key to my business, and I'm going to give it to somebody I at least want a face and a name so I can know who to call and who, can, who to talk to if there's ever a problem. Face-to-face -face still matters. It, it's, it does, and I think it's always going to matter, and I think we're always going to have 
um, you know, some sort of high interaction with every enterprise out there, and that's what they're going to need because this stuff can never commoditize all the way. Creating the solution is still hard. Maybe the bits and pieces underneath it are a little bit easier, but the whole package is going to always be unique and really hard to define in a one-size-fits-all for a lot of those enterprises. John White, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll be back from Zertocon 2018 here in Boston. I'm Paul Gillen. This is theCUBE.